Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the stream. How are y'all doing? Yesterday, I was going to stream, but there was a uh, fire alarm testing thing going on in my apartment building. And so they said it was going to start at like 10 a.m., which is when I usually start streaming, right? So I was like, okay, um, I'll just put off the stream until they hopefully, you know, um, finish. And then once they're done, I'll just start streaming if it's not too late. So fast forward, and well, it's like noon, one o'clock, and they still haven't tested my building, but they've tested a couple others. And I'm like, okay, um, are we going to do it or not today? Finally, it came around like two, three o'clock. They are testing the building. And after that point, I was like, well, why even bother streaming? And uh, so, yeah, I was like, we'll just uh, stream on Tuesday instead of uh, Monday. So here we are doing our thing. And uh, yeah, that's kind of why there wasn't a stream yesterday. I wasn't sure if there was going to be a stream today either because. They're going to take two days to do the whole apartment complex, which is like, uh, I think it's like five or six or some apartment buildings. And so I just wasn't sure if they would, you know, even get to mine in the first place. But luckily they did it in the first day, which I don't know how it wasn't the very first building they did, considering that this building is the one that is attached to the main office. So it's kind of weird. Anyway. Here we are. So, they are doing more testing today, which means we might hear some uh, like fire alarms going off from other buildings, but it should be pretty quiet and muffled compared to having it happen in this building. Okay. So, we'll see what happens. Let's get some music going. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Last time, what we had done is if we switch over to our widescreen monitor right here, we've managed to finish the final level of World 3, World-10, and a number of other levels. So World 3 is now completed, and we created the prefab for World 4. Got all this stuff situated, got it renamed and everything, but there's one thing that we forgot to do. And that is the music. Notice that pretty much right after I ended the stream is that we had this uh, music audio clip just blank. So the first thing we're gonna do is that. Let's pause the music that's been playing and decide which of these lovely tracks we're gonna be playing. Skip around it a little bit. Okay, how about this one? Not bad. I think I'm out this one to be World 5. So let's rename this one to World 5. What about the sunshine group here? Too happy for my taste. I 
That one maybe? Hmm. Let's go with this one. World four. There we go. And then after that, we just need to select all of these, including that one, and then move world four's audio over to here. Okay. And as I was listening to the sunshine one, I was thinking, what about making the sunshine one specifically for world? 310 because it uh it's kind of like a happy go lucky kind of thing right so if you think about it that's kind of what nature would sort of be I think it sort of fits and then we have these three extra or four extra tracks sorry that we can use for other things I don't know what but other things. If we want to add more worlds after this and, and whatnot, we can definitely do that. So let's see. Let us look at our lovely slime stuff to do thing. So as you can see, it's even longer now. I took, again, some time after the previous stream to just stare. Alexa, stop! That was just my reminder to uh, start streaming here at 10 o'clock. So, uh, yeah, this is our thing here. I've added some more after last stream, like I said. Uh, I separated it out into things that we have to do in order to uh, finish the game, make it playable. And then down here, I added all the new level ideas. So we have a total of 14 level ideas that we can implement, which means if we implement all of these, we have only six levels more that we have to create before we're at 50 and we're done. So it should be pretty smooth sailing for the next couple of streams until we hit that point. But first of all, the, the very first one here is to use the conversion block from above. Uh, you have a level that makes you need to convert back and forth. So I think what we need to do first is just design our, our conversion block in paint here, right? Okay. So first of all, let's go ahead and we'll need a rectangle, um, definitely. So how do we want to do this? So our pressure plate was kind of yellow, but I think we want this to be sort of like a. Um, well, what, what what colors haven't we really used for block things? We use purple. We've used red. What, what kind of shouts conversion to us? Hmm. A blue could potentially, but blue is kind of used for ice. Um, for me, conversion kind of seems like purple. I don't know why. You just kind of scream purple at me. But let, let's switch our... Um, let's go to a uh, heptagon here. This will be our, our shape that we're going to use, perhaps. That looks kind of weird. Maybe we won't use it. We'll see. We'll, let, 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 let's see what uh, the other one looks like. So let's get a... Uh, down here. So we could use this. Well, we need to... How was I doing there? Rotating it? Okay, that's weird. We could do this get us this thing or if we wanted to we could use a octagon like so which i think might actually be best we're looking at it here i think we want to go a three i think what we've been doing is a three outline around things we're going to do that and then I guess what we could do is make like a double arrow. Do we have a double arrow in here or is it just like a one-way arrow? A one-way arrow. I guess I could like flip it up to so 
Let's go ahead and we'll, we'll make an arrow kind of like that. Okay. And then let's go ahead and if I just copy paste and I do that, I don't have to do anything that I wanted. I'll just need to, I'm just going to use the circle cutty tool. We're going to copy that. I'm going to add a new layer. Do that, and then I can go to layers and then flip horizontally so it does like that. But of course, it's going to look stupid. So uh, if I just go like this, and I grab the Kai tool again, I can, oops, there. You select this one. I can go down here, I can cut this boy. We can move it. Well, I forgot it does that. Uh, let, let's hit Control X there. Then we can do a new layer. Control V there. And I can just move that like that. I have it like that. And then we can get the uh, eraser tool and just kind of. How did it erase below where I want? Oh, right, because that's above, actually. We can just erase that. And then I can grab our little thing here and do like that. Does that look. Good. Not really. I don't think. Hmm. Erase that. Not for a basic. And then if we add, like, I don't know, a, a dark blue, for example. Right, they're not connected. I forgot. Let's merge them all so then I can do this. If we do something like, like that, or a button, it looks like a Pokeball almost, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's undo all this. Back to before we added the uh, arrow in there. Thank you. Okay. So once more, let's use an arrow and maybe we can even use this arrow. Let's reduce the uh, size of the bounding block here. You know, that one looks a little bit better. So I can get this, for example, and then I suppose we could take a red and then a, I think it was like this purple, like that. Make it like that. And that way, what have we put on? It, it kind of has both colors from the inverse block and the normal, well, actually that's not the pushable block. This one's the pushable block. There we go, like that. Now we have the pushable block and we have the inverse block colors on it. We could also flip them around. Not if I don't hit enter first. I kind of flip them around, do that. Mm, I think I liked how it was before that. A little darker, nicer to look at for me anyway. I think we'll go with this. <clears throat> so let's go file, save as. We're gonna call this the converter block or pad or whatever. Doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and get rid of the picture there. Open up our assets here. And we're just gonna drag that in real quick. Oop. And then we'll do our usual thing here. Apply. And we got it. All right, so now if we zoom in here, we grab our, our lovely little uh, converter pad here. We want to make sure it's above ground, or above the background. And that's fine there. We have prefabs and uh, let's go to scripts and then object scripts. All right, let's make this script real quick. So also I forgot about uh, music. There we go. All right, now we have a little bit of background music, so it's not just me talking, and then silence if I'm not. Okay. So. 
rename converter block. I'm just going to call it a block. Doesn't really matter too much. All right. So this one, it'll be pretty straightforward. It's not going to be anything too complicated. second because I didn't actually name the uh, converter block before the script was created I had to rename this line here okay so for this one very simple we just need two serialized fields of game objects called a uh, movable block and one called inverse block like that and I think that's all, that's all we need to do. So let's also grab a private vector three called block POS, which is gonna be our position of the block as we're moving it around, uh, or onto the pad, sorry. And so what we'll do is we will take a on trigger enter 2d and we want to check if collision dot game object dot tag equals um movable block we want to do this else if and i'm just going to copy this instead of typing it i'm going to change this to inverse block and else return. We're not going to do anything, basically. If, not, if anything else hits it, we're not going to do anything. So, the first thing we want to do, and actually, maybe we don't want to have this. I mean, I'll, I'll save it for now as we're doing things. So anyway, we want to check it's a movable block. If it is, what we want to do is destroy collision.game object. And then we want to instantiate um, inverse block at this dot position. Dot, just dot transform dot position, right? Like that. Do I need the criterion identity? Criterion dot identity. I guess we do. Okay, so we'll grab that. So that'll create our our lovely game object. But I think I need to do game object dot or game object um new obj equals that and then in new obj dot transform dot set parent equals this dot transform dot parent oh is it a method oh, hold on i always forget how the uh, stuff works but i don't use much if i do this it should set the parent to the parent of the pressure uh, of, of the converter block because if we don't do this the uh, game object is going to be a um it's gonna be a child of the converter block when we do this I and mean, that's not what we want because that could potentially cause issues in the future i don't know but we just want it to be in the the item section and so we're just going to take this information here and we're going to paste it down here, but instead of the inverse block, we're going to create a movable block right here. And I think I can just get rid of block POS. I don't think I need this. This is very simple to code. We're not going to be doing much else with this. 
Um, basically what this is going to do is going to destroy the game object we're pushing onto the block. Is then going to create a new one at the position of the converter block, which means it's going to center it, basically. And then it's going to change the parent to be, rather than a child of the converter block, it's going to be a child of the items thing. So if we were to grab our prefab and we get a, first of all, movable block in there, inverse block there, and we get a movable block up here, we will need to add a box collider 2D. We're gonna set this to is trigger and rather than the pressure plate having a big hitbox, we're gonna move this one down to like here. Pressure plate does have a huge hitbox, doesn't it? No, it does not, it has a small one. Well, we can make this one smaller, so that's fine. Um, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and we'll center it like that. Excellent, okay. So here's our lovely little hitbox. So now, if we were to grab our spawn point, which is in the middle there, I'm just gonna move it over here, hit play, let's test out and see if it works. So, we're gonna push our lovely blah, what was that error? Next out of range for, oh, for the message count, right? Not 50, fine. Okay, anyway. We're gonna push this onto here. Oh. Well, it's doing its thing. However, it's constantly changing the, the block because it's constantly triggering a uh, a new thing. So how do I prevent that from happening? Okay. What we could do is add just a, a coroutine to kind of give us some time in between. Um, first of all, let's redo that. And then I'm just gonna go down here real quick for all these and just add a thing there for future use. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna copy this real quick. Let's create a numerator here. So, i.e. numerator, uh, wait to trigger, like that, and we'll just do that. And let's, let's give it like a second of the player would do much. And what we'll grab is we'll, we'll take a private Boolean uh, has triggered equals false. And so we'll check if has triggered equals true or equals true. Yeah. What we want to do is just return. We can change this to an else if. And what we'll do here is we'll take a has triggered equals true, but we want to do that before we do anything else. So let's do that and that. And then after this happens, we want to do start coroutine, wait to trigger like that. And so now what this will do is first time we trigger, it's going to be false. So this doesn't happen. So it's going to check this for a movable block or this for an inverse block. And whichever happens, it's going to come in here, set trigger to true. So this cannot happen again until the coroutine triggers, which it's not going to right now. Um, We'll just do that real quick. Okay, so this will come down here. It'll first set the trigger to true so that we don't trigger either of these for a while. It'll destroy the game object. It will create a new game object that is the parent. It will then trigger this weight to trigger, which since it's being 
since it's spawning here, we should have what happens is that this will cause them to not trigger the on enter. Because it's not on stay 2D, just on trigger. Which means if we push this, it'll snap there and we wait. You see, it's not changing even after a second passes because on enter happens once whenever the block enters the hitbox. It's not going to happen. Um, it, it, it's not going to happen a second time, right? So if we push it off and push it back on, it could potentially happen, but that's not what's going down, right? Okay, so. We have our block it's completed, uh, barring any unforeseen circumstances. And we don't have to add any special resets to this. We're not going to have it get destroyed by destroyer blocks. Um, it's just going to be a pad that does this. And only this. Oh, look at yeah. Excuse me. We can bring out our five stuff to do. We can go ahead and remove this. Number three for adding a pressure plate that does this. So I think since we're in a new world, we should introduce this block first. So we will want to do this. Okay. Let's let that aside over there. All right. So we will want to design, design a level in which we ugh, need to use this block. So. First things first, let's go ahead and delete that movable block for right now. And then we need to just create a prefab of this guy right here. Okay. So now we have this guy here. Easy peasy. So what we want to do is make a course where you have to get a block through it. However, you need to use the conversion pads to do so. What we're going to do, first of all, click on the tile map collider. Let's go ahead and add our exit down here. That'll be fine. We can get our end level script, put it down here. And our spawn point, let's go ahead and just drag it up here like usual. There we go. Okay. So. First things first, let's get our movable block that we previously deleted, and it'll be here. <clears throat> so what we want to do, show the player what happens when they push it over a thing here. So what we could do is grab in our tile palette, draw on tile collider, we can add a block here a block this sort of thing that way there will be a converter here and the player can move a pressure plate down that way i could use either one to be honest but uh, the thing is the player should be able to go around it at some point in order to figure out what it does right um i guess i could put it at both as well yeah Let's do that. Let's put a converter here, and we'll do another one up here as well. So the player can go over it without an issue, but they're going to have to move block on one of them. So, whatever the player wants to do. So, they get the block out here, for whatever reason. And let's make the map a little bit more here. So let's grab that. Let's do this, and let's hmm. How do I want to do this?
this is one of the things that's probably going to take a while for this level. Because it's a new thing. I'm still getting used to what all I can do with it, right? So once it goes through here, it's going to be an inverse block. The players are going to have to pull it. Unless they just push... Unless they, like, pull it off, go back through, pull it again. Then I can just convert it like that. Which is fine. I don't want to set, like, a limit on the conversions. So all the players will be able to do whatever they want with the block, right? That's kind of the goal. Um, so, what we'll do is have them just we'll come down through here. Let, let's, let's do this. Let's make what we want to do here real quick. I have a plan for this little area. Um, not that block either, that one. That, and then use that, and then that, and you can remove that middle one. We can throw a block void here. The player has to go there, which means they're going to need a conversion block to turn a movable block into a inverse block. So that way they can pull it down this tunnel here. Okay. Now. How do I want to do the rest of this? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. We've gotten the block out here. Do we have anything else that we can use that would help us or hurt us? I think both blocks can. Wait. I think inverse blocks get destroyed by um, projectiles. Normal blocks do not. So that's fine. For some reason the music volume seemed a little loud. I turned it down. Okay. Let's also add this here. No, not there. Hmm. What to do? What to do? There's going to be an inverse block, which is going to be it's going to be pretty impossible to get it against this wall as that. So we're going to need probably one right here that we can kind of finagle it through here and pull it down to there, pull it across there, and then go back around and push it against the wall. But that's not gonna work either, is it? Because then if they push it, it's just gonna run into that. It's not gonna be ideal. I guess what we could do is put a conversion block here as well. That way the, uh, they push a, or pull a inverse block across here, turn into a movable block, push the movable block into an inverse block, they can come over here, pull it down, till they hit here. Which means they're going to probably want another converter block here to turn it into a movable block. So they can push it down again. Turn it into an inverse block and go around and pull it through finally. So, yes, that's what we can do there for that little corner. Uh, now up here, what we could do is add a couple of these guys to sort of block out the path here. So if it's an inverse block, when they push it through, we can either put it down there or up there, whichever they want. So if it's an inverse block here, they can you know pull it to here, pull it down to here, pull it over to there. Inverse block here, they can uh, pull it out so it's in here, then they can pull it downward there. Um, let's move this one over to here. And then... Uh, take this one and move it down one as well. No, that doesn't help. 
Dynamic. If we can do it like that, screw it. Um, and then, so pull it out here, and then pull it down to there. Right, and pull it out to here, pull it down to here, pull it down there, pull it down to there. It's up to the player, because normally you wouldn't think to put a block up to there, right? also just add a uh, converter block there just to mess with the player yeah yeah and also a converter block here too okay I'm not gonna think of the logic of how that's gonna work the players should have to figure it out it is possible since you can go over the same you know, block multiple times, trigger it to whatever you want it to be. It was perfect. Okay. Escaping out of this tunnel with an inverse block, because it has to be an inverse block, you can't do anything else. Um, you basically pull it to here, and then you can go around and pull it up again. Or you can pull it up to here. You can pull it up to here. And then we can add like this. Yeah. And the player can choose if they want to have a movable block to push up this way or an inverse block to pull up this way, right? And so we can add a couple of things in their way. Is that going to do anything? An inverse block, they're gonna to pull up to here, and they're gonna pull over to there, and that's gonna get them blocked. So the normal block, they can push it up to here, push it up to there, and it's gonna get stuck. They can push it up and over to here, and push it up all the way. I don't think that's gonna help much, to be honest. Where's that other mobile block there? Let's get rid of that shit. Okay. Ooh, I got it. Why don't I do this? Then we'll put a pitfall here to basically force them to get rid of the, the movable block. And since the pitfalls require a uh, movable block, so you can't trigger them when they're an inverse block, they'll have to go up that route there with it. That's fine. Okay. Then we'll be in this chamber, and we will have a another block here for them to move. And then You know, I could just cover the entire floor with like inverse blocks at this, or with the converter blocks at this point. Really make the player think about how they're gonna move further here. I'll have to like every other one. There we go. Now they're gonna have to like push, move, pull, move, push, move, pull, kind of like alternating like that until they reach down to here. And let's make it so that they have to get to one specific point in order to exit right here 
specifically, which means they need to have this one be a push block. And then once they get pushing, they're going to need another thing here to get the, uh, the push away from the wall so they can pull. So let's make this, they push onto that, they're going to turn in, that's the, that one, so that's going to be an inverse block. So they can pull it to a place they need it. Here's what we're going to have to do is let's, let's get a depositor here. And this one's going to have a fill point of one. Here's its spawn point. There you go. All right. So we'll, of course, need to convert this block once again at some point. We can have it convert down to here. Wait, that's going to be an inverse block, so it would have to be converted over here. Yeah. And the player can leave. Okay. All right, let's play test. Mute my music. Okay. So, let's go up. Push this down, I can still continue to go over with it. Push it down, it'll turn into an inverse block, which is not going to help us. So we'll have to go around, go down, get it to become that again. We can push it down to here to get an inverse block. We can pull it over to here, up to here, and we can push it into the hole. Oh, this one's going to be tricky. If we just go at like a angle like this, will it work? Can you do this puzzle? Actually, now that I'm looking at it. I don't think you can. I don't know how I brute forced that, but I did. And so, uh, it appears to be possible. So then, in just around two minutes, level completed. Yeah, this part is odd. You're gonna have to use some uh, finagling and hitbox mechanics in order to complete it, but it is possible. As shown by me somehow brute forcing it. And, uh, we're gonna leave that in the game. Nice. Okay. So, that level completed. Go ahead and add that down there. Also, you might be asking yourself, um, hey, we haven't, uh, you know, gotten screenshots for World 3 yet. Are we going to get screenshots? Yes, we'll do that later. I've I decided today we're just going to jump right in here so that it's not covering the same stuff we did on Friday. Maybe we'll go grab screenshots tomorrow for the worlds we complete today and we complete the other day, right? So, hold on, I got something in my eye, apparently. Okay. All right, so let's go music back on. Boop. Okay. We need to do the dialogue still, but that's fine. We'll just add this for now. That way we can add it into level 310. Okay. Save. All right, so the previous dialogue would have been um, them going into the fake exit room. And then... Once they're here, we need to talk about the fact that they uh, went into a, a fake room, basically, right? So...
let's go ahead and say, oh, found your way out, did you? Yes. That freedom thing was a lie. It was a test to see if you could tell my fake slimes and nature apart from real slimes nature looks like you did and managed to find the lever to the next experiment as a prize I'll introduce you to a new block, the conversion block. It functions similar to a pressure plate. Why don't you move a block onto it? You'll figure it out. There we go, we'll do that. Okay, so the cook's fun at the player, or the slime specifically, for uh, the freedom thing. Oh, so that's good job, you found your way out. And then it says as a prize, here's a new testing chamber and a new block thing. So, with level four one completed, we can now use conversion blocks elsewhere in our level. We can also get rid of that idea. I'm going to leave the one there just so I can add new things uh, to here. So anyway, what I would like to do next is did I use if I hit control F and do convert I just do convert no. So I've not used conversion blocks anywhere else in the uh, dialogue here, which is just great. I would love to continue using a couple of inversion blocks. Uh, not conversion blocks, conversion blocks. But uh, sadly not. So, what we were going to do next is create a singularity. Mm, yes, yes. So, in this particular level, we're going to edit the block void to be destroyed if hit by X amount of destroyer blocks in X amount of time. For this, we want to use a level where we have three destroyer blocks to make a singularity block that is worth 100 blocks that can be put into a depositor. First, we want to push destroyers onto a conveyor that will go in the wrong direction. Then, when we have all of the blocks or the destroyer blocks into position, we want to flip a switch so that the conveyors go to the middle. So that way, all of the singularity or all the destroyer blocks will reach the block void at the same time. It will then, instead of a block void, it will destroy the block void and create a singularity block which also destroys conveyors and stuff like that, since it is too heavy. It will push the conveyor or the singularity block into the depositor, which requires a hundred um, things to fill. So, first things first, we need to open up our prefab script for the block void. <clears throat> we need to add a couple of things to this. So, first of all, Serialize field, um, int, destroyers able to take, and then we want to do int time between destroyers. That's max time between destroyers is what we should do. Okay, and then we'll do, do I want to do this? Not really, it doesn't really matter. So, 
Let's get an update going. Because we need to check. Uh, so we need to do for this private float time. This is gonna have to be a float equals uh well, that doesn't matter. And then private float timer equals zero. Awake. We're going to have timer equals zero. Actually, that doesn't matter because that's going to happen up there anyway. So, okay. We want to check if. And we want to add another Boolean, sorry. Destroyer entered equals false. Okay, so if destroyer entered equals true. We then want to check if timer is greater than or equal to time. And if it is, we basically want to do time equals zero. And well, before that, I guess we should we should do destroyer entered equals false and then time equals zero um, so that way we don't have to we won't loop in here again and check stuff um do else timer plus equals i guess it would be do I need time and timer? Or should I just do here the max time between destroyers? I don't need this one. Then on a way, I want to set time equal to zero. Unless I just in here do time equals zero. Right, like that. And the time plus equals time dot delta time, right? So if a destroyer block gets in here, we want to do destroyer why is that I was like, why is it not trying to, like, tell me anything here? Okay. Okay. Then we want to do destroyers absorbed plus plus to do that okay we then want to check if destroyers absorbed equals destroyers able to take we want to first of all serialize field game object Very singularity block we want to instantiate singularity block uh, but we need to do a game object sing equals singularity block at this dot transform dot position slash criterion identity and then we need to do sing dot transform dot set parent uh, and then this dot transform I don't know what false does there but dot parent you know what I need to do there okay so what this will do is it will when the amount of destroyers absorbed equals the absorbers or destroyers able to take 
the singularity is going to uh, basically spawn, or the, the void is going to create a singularity. When the singularity uh, gets created, it's going to change the position or the parent from the void block to be the, the item uh, thing that we usually put it into, right? Because if we destroy, well, I guess I don't want to destroy this. I just want to do this dot game object dot set active false like that. Because if we were to set it inactive first, I think what would happen is that um, this code would no longer execute if we put it down below. So we need to make sure that this thing becomes that. And if we were to not separate it, so the singularity block becomes a child of the block void, and we then set the block void inactive, the singularity would also be inactive. Okay, that's what we're going to do here. We also need to down here make uh, destroyers absorb equals zero. Okay, so as we're going through the time, uh, if a destroyer has entered, we're going to start a timer. If the time limit has been reached for more destroyers to be entered, we are then going to set destroyers entered equals to false, set the time equal to zero, and set destroyers absorbed equal to zero as well. So basically we just reset things. Um, however, if destroyers entered remain true, we're going to set time dot delta time right, plus equals to that. So we'll just create incrementing the time between these until we reach that amount of time there. Okay. So that's what we'll do. So let's hit this and I'm thinking we might have to go back through our our things here and, and change some stuff. But that's neither here nor there. Let's also open up paint.net again if I could if I could type. We need to make our singularity block, remember? Image resize 32 to 32. And let's zoom on in. Okay. So what fancy little little things do we have here that we could make it with? Um it probably should be like around. What is this? Turn that off and just see how this looks if I were to like bring it out here. Okay. We could kind of make it a round block, I think. That'd be great. And then let's get let's make the the central one really, really like dark. Right? And then let's open up our Thing here and you know what I'm gonna bring in the block void open that baby up and let's grab the purple from it and that's gonna be the outer ring and then we're gonna take the thing oops not that sorry we're then gonna grab this one and just take it darker here so it gets even darker and then it's going to be completely black in there. But let's add a couple of highlights as well. Let's hit here and then if I use my pencil, I can add a couple of random things in there. I'm gonna remove that one that's out there, actually. There's not really a center area for this, is there? Oops, still using the pencil. Center would be those four right there, I think, yeah. It looks better if there's just a black void just in the middle of it, right? Okay, then let's make it really light. And we'll add a couple more of these guys around here. Is 
Just kind of give this one a little bit more texture, right? Okay. I think we can do that for our singularity block here. So we'll do a singularity. Be the name. Put that out of there. Go ahead and go prefabs. And let's. Why is there a block void right there? Okay. What? Where's that block void? Huh? Excuse me. I didn't drag a, a block void into here, did I? Why is there a block void right there? Freaking graph error. Now let's let's open this up. Um, if I hit play, do I see that? Something fucked up in the tile palette, didn't it? It didn't. Um, okay. Let's figure this out. If I close GM, it's still there. If I close the GUI, it's still there. If I close the main camera, it's still there. Event system, it's still there. What? Huh? I I don't understand. Where's that coming from? I've got everything inactive. I could possibly have it, and yet it's it's just there. Are you, my guy? Let's just hit Control Z a couple of times, shall we? What? Unload that scene. Unload the scene. Okay. What? What? What is this? Oh, fuck. What? What? That makes no sense. How? What? What is this? Huh? I have no idea what's happening. I have removed everything from the scene. This isn't like a part of a scene. But it's but it's here. What? What's 
just reload and see what happens. I have no idea what's going on. Like there's an image in the editor, but there's nothing there and it's gone now. So bizarre. I mean, when in doubt, you just gotta, you know. <laughs> okay, well, that works. All right, let's 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 create our singularity block for now. Um, oops, what I wanted to do, that was my bad, actually. Um, it did get added, though, at least. All right, so let's go ahead and do all of this stuff. And now if I drag this out here, it should be a, a lovely singularity block. I'm going to make it 0 0.9, 0 0.9, just so it's a little bit smaller. What is that? I thought I saw like a little fucking slime there. I was going to be like, mm. Okay. So singularity. It's going to be on the character level. It's going to be a level zero. We're going to add a um, circle collider which is going to be perfectly around it. Mm, love it. And then a rigid body 2D, which we're going to need to do something. We need kinematic, continuous, and freeze zero rotation. I think is all I really have to do to it. Um, cool. Then we want to go to scripts, object scripts. We want to create a Create a singularity script, and then also want to add a singularity tag. And we will add on to this. Okay. And then we can go here, singularity script, open it up. Do I actually need a script for it? I don't think I do. I think I can just push it now. Yeah? Yeah, looking at the move of a block. I don't think I need one. Let me get my uh, my guy here. I'm not a fan of the... Uh... Okay, I think I was just too zoomed in to see the line there for some reason. I think if I just push it... I think I can push it. No? No? Does it need to be dynamic? I think it does. Yep. Okay. Well, it had gravity, so... That was a thing. Right, it's not enigmatic, it's dynamic, and then gravity needs to be set to zero. And mass, we're gonna set it to five. We'll, we'll play with the mass until it like feels heavy. I think, well, not like that. So I could go in and make a, an update on the singularity script and make it um, so every like second its velocity is sent to zero. God damn it, I forgot the freaking end level was right there. Okay, let's move that up there. Get it nice and out of the way. Okay, we're pushing the singularity. It doesn't feel heavy right now. What if we change the mass to 15 as well? It does feel very heavy now. Um, that's the thing. What if we set it to 20 instead? Doesn't really add too much there. What about 30? Okay, there we go. Now it feels a lot more dense. Okay. 
cat. Oh, so let's have that 30. Um, what if I create an animation for it? I just want to see if this works. If it does, cool. If not, whatever. Um, so I think if I record and then I take this guy and then I do something like this. And if I do that again. Do that again. Like that, and then if I go to animation. Hmm. Oh, I remember. <laughs> let's, let's delete that little node there. Okay, and then let's return this to zero, okay? Let's record again, and this time we're just going to change the rotation by 0 0.01 real quick to get that node there. We're then going to go a little bit further here, and we're going to do a 45 degree rotation. And go to animation and then we're going to go up a little bit again up a little bit again and we're going to we're going to 90 back to here move it up again and then 45 plus 90 is is what um blah 30 and 135 right Move you up a little again. Make this a little bit easier to see. And then from here, we want to add another 140, which would give us. One eighty. Damn it! I don't know why I was like, uh, I don't know. One eighty. And then from here, you no. Know, let's just stop recording. Let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, so you can see it kind of rolls around like that. Excellent. Let's hit stop, and then if I hit record again. I think I can add more, right? So 180. Oops. 225. I can move it again. With 225, it would be 270. We're just gonna go to 360. I'll smooth it out after uh, this happens. And then we get 315. Move it up a little bit more. And then last one is 360. If we stop and we hit play, we can see it kind of more smoothly rotates around. It's a little jaggedy because of the uh, points here. Uh, well, let's just spread this out here a little bit more so we can see them all. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Let's stop and then... Okay. First one's at zero. Let's move this one to 0 0.5, 0 0.10. Let's just do it like every 0 0.5 seconds. And just see how that looks. That's all of them. Okay, so now if we hit play. It's a lot faster, so we can change it to this. Well, I think we need to delete the last one. I think it's getting like hitched. Right? Oh. 
It is like stuttering for a second though. Hit hit that real quick. What if I just put zero here? Does it look smoother then? Hmm. A little better. Let me let me hit play and see what it looks like when we're actually looking at it. Here's the vibe. Make the screen there. I think having it moving definitely looks better than it not moving. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll leave it like that. So now it has a, uh, a movement to it. We then want to, of course, make sure that it is uh, unscaled time right here. Perfect. Okay. All right, excellent. So that's been added. Um, again, I don't think we need a singularity script. Let's just remove that and we're just going to delete that there. I suppose rather than destroying conveyor belts, we can just have it not react to conveyor belts. Hmm. Hmm, that would be what we can do. Okay. So what else did my thing say? Um, it's worth a hundred blocks, so we need to get the depositor. Is that still here? It is. Okay. We then want to do case singularity, and we'll just copy what we have in the movable block thing. But it's going to be new val minus equals. 100, like that, okay, I'm just going to remove that line, perfect, so now um, we have a singularity able to go into a depositor, perfect, okay, okay. That's our singularity block. I think that's all we have to do with the singularity. We don't have to do anything else to it. It's not going to interact with anything. Um, pressure plates, it's just going to throw the pressure plate completely off by not being able to interact with it. That's going to be fine. So let's just throw it into a prefab. We have to mess with it later. We can. All right. So we want to look at the block void. We want to add the singularity. And for this one, I'm going to set these values just so in the event that, you know, previous, um, uh, previous things here, previous block voids, where the hell they are, um, they're not going to be just messed up, right? Okay, so let's just set these equal to the shortest to take. I'm going to set it to 50 just by default. And then max time between destroyers. We're going to set it to. Is that to zero? It's going to always check that, right? Yeah, so we'll leave it to zero by default. I think that's fine. Okay. Let's take care of that. So. Now we just need to lay out the level, which should be fairly easy. Um, what we're going to want to do, I think, is let's get the tile map first, and we'll get our... Um, not that, sorry. Get our things laid out here. Oops, that's the wrong one. This one. Okay, let's get the end level down to there. And we'll go ahead and... Oops, not that one sort of do our thing here. 
grab our sing not singularity, I'm sorry. We need the depositor down here. We're going to have our spawn point be here. The value is going to be 100. Fire alarm's going off. I'm curious, uh, if I do 100 here, yeah, that's not, not wide enough to fit in there. What if I adjust the box like a little bit? Hmm. It, it would fit, but it would be hard to sell. Um, I do like 4.5. I can. Okay. Depositor. I guess I could just leave it as this for like all of them. Yeah, we'll do that. Save. Okay. So now we've made sure that we can fit 100 on here. Um, that, that's that's good. So let's go depositor, 100, front point, yada yada, perfect. Okay, so the goal is to get a singularity down here, pushed in there. Um, so first of all, we're going to want to move our spawn point up. We move our spawn point up here. We then want to get a pressure plate here. And it is going to do one object. We're going to say it's going to ignore destroyers. Um, we're then going to give it destroyer blocks. And... Yeah, that's going to be it. Okay. <clears throat> so... So then I'm gonna grab a block void. I think I'm gonna put it here. Sounds right. Okay. Hmm. I think I can shorten it up actually. Alright, so with the block void. We're going to say it needs three destroyers, and the time between destroyers is going to be two seconds. Then we're going to grab our conveyor belts. Is that? This one didn't get centered. There we go. Okay. Let's go with three conveyor belts, shall we? And then, if I need to, I can... Actually, I might just adjust these all down by one. Okay. Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Okay. And then... Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. And just one more conveyor belt there to make it a nice four everywhere. Okay. So what I will do here is we're just going to go like this and then like this and we want to create a, a lovely wall on each side here. Like that. Boop, and boop, and then this one goes like that, okay. So this is what the layout for the Singularity Collider is going to be. Now, we just need to change the conveyor belts to do the right thing. So these are, of course, going to be going this way, but this one, it is going to be going to the left. We want it to be 180 rotation. This one, this one. Also going to be 180 rotation, going to the left. Gotta make sure they're all connected together. Uh, we don't want to ignore destroyers. Uh, we are going to have all of these center the block, however. Okay. And we're going to do this for basically everything. So boop, boop, boop. Uh, these are going to be going... Um, or not all of these. These two are going to be going down. We're going to have their rotation be, I think it's negative 90 for down. 
Perfect. And the other two conveyors here, they're going to be going up. And I think it's just normally 90 for up. Perfect. For these two, we want them to go left. So we want to do 180. Going left. And the last two, we need them to be going right. And they're already perfect how they are. Good. I did not set the first two to go right. Okay, okay right. So, perfect. So, the plan for this is the player is going to come here and push the destroyer blocks into this area, whichever way they want to go from. And it is going to push it up into this little area here, here, and here. And after they've done that, there's going to be some levers somewhere that they can pull, which will change the conveyor belts to go the correct way. So they're all pointing inward, and they're going to send all the destroyer blocks in there so that they can get the singularity. Now, once they have the singularity, they'll, of course, just push it down here and into here, and that will be that. So we have to add a little extra stuff in order to actually, you know, get things going um, over in this area. But this is the basic plan. So let, let's go ahead um, with the... Yeah, so with these, I can't really do much um, with just levers. However, what we can do is add pressure plates, because we have used pressure plates before in order to manipulate the uh, conveyor belts. So, right, they, they only do one at a time, don't they? So they do do them permanently. I've actually completely forgotten. Um, is the conveyor belt a single object? Or just where is it? Wait, what? If it's a destroyer block... Oh, right. So the pressure plate only actually does this if it's a destroyer block triggering it. Right, so that wouldn't actually help me at all. I'm just going to mess with the lever script then. Let's get rid of some of these, like, unnecessary things. Starting to get cluttered. Okay. So rather than the pressure plate, we'll just do levers. That way we can toggle them on and off. So I need to get the lever script open. Okay. Lever, 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 lever. We'll go ahead and add them up against this wall here, I think. Actually, what I should do is make a little room for these to go in that like, kind of seals off when you do it. Let's do that, shall we? Okay. And we can get a gate here. Mm, this one. Go. And I think I'll just add a pressure plate to trigger. Once you go inside of it, it will. Actually, how do I want to do this?
I could, I guess. Yeah, let, 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 let's do that instead. Hold on. Let's go to the Tile Map Collider once more. Okay. I'm just going to move this gate out of the way real quick. Actually, let's move it... I don't know. Um... I need room in order to do this. Ugh. I don't know, I can use some room up here. That's right. That's what I can do. Let me grab these levers. And we're gonna move them up to here instead. Still doesn't really help what I want to do right now, unfortunately. Um, I'm gonna have to put it somewhere else, aren't I? Unless I want to shorten the conveyor belt so I can have more room down there. How about we make the room down here, where there is more space that I can use. And this gate, I'll use you here. Just like this. I'll put another lever right here. We'll grab a vertical gate right here. And we need to change this. There you go. Okay. So by default, this one is going to be closed. Lever number three, you're going to affect multiple objects, which is going to be to change going to be this one boop and this one boop so it's going to start off and then on for those okay so that way when you come in here flip this lever it's going to open up this area and then close off this gate and you can flip those levers which they are going to manipulate conveyor belts which we don't have a uh script for those yet but we'll, we'll add those um, for now let's just check them all to be multiple objects and then we're going to uh, I'll just change okay I'll just go ahead and set them up so they're ready so I need these two we're gonna go to the first lever two and 11 and then looks like five and six are going to lever two so here's five and here's six and then it is nine and ten for lever one oops Okay. All right, so in the lever script, we're going to do another Boolean called is conveyors. We're going to do another serialized field with a string direction to move and that's it for right now all right so the reset lever one we'll deal with that in a second i want to check if key down um if multiple objects equals true i want to go into multiple objects so it is multiple objects um first we want to do for each object and objects to change 
We want to do that. But we actually want to check if uh, is conveyors equals true. We're going to want to go into here and do for each um, game object G in objects to change. And then we're going to want to take g dot get component conveyor belt script dot uh, direction equals direction to move and then we also need to get um let me look at the pressure plate script because i do not want to try to work this out again Okay, so this is what we had for that. So let's go ahead and just add the thing over here. Okay. So let's grab all of this. And we'll then place this here. So rather than flip to direction, we're going to do direction to move. And rather than conveyor to manipulate, very simply, we're just going to put G. Okay, I think that's pretty much all we had to do with the conveyor belts right there. Um, right, I switched the direction to move down here, but I can actually just get rid of this line entirely. Okay, so this will rotate the conveyor belts um, and change their direction to move. Um, just for this, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna copy this. Uh, we also need at the end of this, a return, so it doesn't do anything else down here. Okay. So in the reset thing here, we're gonna have to flip them back. So we want to check if multiple objects, and then we want to do if is conveyors equals true. I'm just going to paste this in here. And then we'll do else. I'm just going to copy all of this stuff. Paste it into there. If I do return, it's going to exit out right away. And it's not going to even go through this last stuff here, which, uh, want. So I'm gonna have to add more stuff down here. I think I just realized. Yep. Okay. So if we want to reset the lever, we're basically going to want to do this, but opposite. So rather than just changing this value, we are going to need to put it down into here. Except this is going to change to up. This is going to change to down. This is going to change to right. And this is going to change to left. And then we need to go ahead and change these values. And thank God these are easy. We go all right so when we undo them we're basically just changing them back so if it's supposed to be going to the right uh when we change it we want to change it back to the right um easy as that so i might actually copy that okay looking back down at our uh multiple object script here 
Uh, it, it only checks to see one thing, right? If we flip it twice, it's not going to reset them, which is unfortunate. So we need to test if is activated, right? Let's see. We come into update, go into check multiple objects. OK, so yeah, so in multiple objects, if conveyors is true, do this. We then want to check also if is activated equals true. We want to do this. Else, we want to do oops, this. Why do I have errors? Term G does not exist in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I just copied that and didn't do the count. For each game object G in object exchange. There we go. Now we have it. Okay. So if the lever is activated, we're going to unactivate it. If it's not activated, we're going to activate it and change the conveyor belt's direction. So without further ado, let's at least just test this little portion. We'll just have to make sure that we change the stuff we added here. The lever, this wants to be, uh, first of all, let's just check his conveyor for all of these. This is one and two. One and two are on the left, right? So we want them to switch to the right. This is the, I'm pretty sure this is uh, nine and 10, which are on the right. Yep, okay. These are going to the right, but we want them to go to the left. So left is what we're doing here. And then these, the last one, these are just gonna go down, okay. Test it out to make sure that it works before we go any further here. We're gonna flip this switch, flip that, flip that, flip that. Oop. There we go. That is one thing about the hitboxes, they are a little bit messed up. They're overlapping if they're close together. Maybe I'll change that. Hmm. Prefab. Lever. Change you up. So the circle collider, let's bring it in a little further. Like this. Now let's just check to make sure that they work still. I assume they will, it's just... I can still flip multiple of them, but it's it's less. Yeah. It's better, essentially. So, that's good. Alright. Another problem solved. Alright, so now we have our little, uh, our safe room, where we're gonna be, you know, doing stuff at. But what I should really test right now is just whether or not the destroyer blocks are actually going to work and convert it into a singularity. Because we have not yet tested that thing yet. So this is like the end game what the player is going for with this. Why are they not moving? They destroy our blocks, you uh, you realize you can move, right? Why are you on what? Hold on. Let me just double check this. Did they? They were pointing in the right direction, but was the stuff right? We wanted this one to go to the left, which is 
9 and 10. Let's hit play one more time. So I did see the destroyer blocks move here. If I flip this one, it changes, but the destroyer block does not move. I guess because the destroyer block did not re-enter the... Yeah. It's not... Right, because the story block is not re-entering the trigger. It is not working. Okay. This might be a bit of a pickle then. Well, somebody could just flip a switch and they would move. Might have to readjust the conveyor belt script to be a little smarter. Because, yeah, if we look at one of the uh, conveyor belts here, uh, we can see it is, it is going down. However, if we look at the destroyer block that's on it, this one, and we were to open the, uh, the info, we can see its velocity is still y equals 2. And it has not reset. So we're going to have to figure something out. Um... So what if I, on the conveyor belt, I'm not going to be able to use Enter 2D and Exit 2D. I mean, I will be able to use Exit 2D, but on, I can use On Stay, On Trigger Stay 2D. We can then add a public bool. Um, Lever manipulation equals false. And we'll just go here to if lever manipulation equals true, we then want to do something here. Um, what we'll do, who knows? Um, we'll figure that out in just a second. Okay. Um, Um, I, can we, can I just do on trigger, enter 2D, and then, can I just call it like that? Because I guess, yeah, because it is just a method. And then we'll do a private bool triggered stay once equals false. We'll go into here, if. Trigger stay once equals false. Trigger stay once equals true. And we can do that. So essentially what that lets us do is if we set lever manipulation to false, it will allow us to do that. Right? Hmm. <laughs> right, so first of all, the, the lever script, because we have the conveyor belt script attached, we're going to change the lever manipulation script. It's going to happen. Uh, so that the, the stay can happen once. It's going to set that equal to true. It's going to trigger the enter 2D one more time. Because when that happens, it will allow the block to move. However, what we do need to do before we do that, we need to re, excuse me, we need to reset the, uh, 
conveyor change. So let's find our destroyer block. Okay, so we have destroyer block. And then DB, we're just going to copy this. Actually, I can just do conveyor change, total conveyor change. Okay, let me do that. Fuck it, let me just copy this. Just so I know what the variables are here. Okay, so before we actually trigger anything, what we need to do is we need to do collision dot game object dot find or dot I'm sorry get component um, destroyer block dot total conveyor change equals vector three dot zero. We're just gonna copy this. Paste it again, and we're just going to change the total, remove that, so it's just conveyor change, like that. So what this will do is it'll zero out both of the, the vectors that we had previously from pushing them, and it will allow them to be manipulated, right? And then once that happens, I guess we can also just do lever manipulation equals false. As well. Do I even need trigger stay once then? Because if I just do lever manipulation, or they flipped it, it would trigger once and then turn off again. So I could reuse it if I needed to. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and copy this, remove this, get rid of this variable here. I do believe this will work. I do not necessarily need that other extra thing, right? Okay. This should work because it's it's going to reset things and it's going to re-trigger the, the on enter, which will happen. And then the conveyor was going in the correct direction, but if they flip the lever again, it should also do the same thing as well. Um, so it triggers a total of once, right? The thing is, I I need this on stay collision because if I do not have it, the problem is going to be that I do not know what object is in it, right? Unless there is a... Game object dot find game object this dot I'm sure to stay tuned. No, that just calls the thing again. I was thinking that there's a way to like get anything that's colliding with the block. Um, Unity, how to get objects in trigger without using stay on trigger. Check that object in the bounds of a trigger, not touching them. Trigger on stay. Yeah, but that's not what I need either. Hmm. 
I can trigger probably one of objects. There we go. They're not triggering. Unity, can you use code to find objects in trigger without using on trigger stay? Alternative to on trigger stay. Pick up objects inside collider. Can't believe the on trigger entry behavior. Um I rigid body wake up on trigger data. Nice the colliders bounds and use dot contains. If I were to do this dot get component, um it's a box collider 2d dot contains no dot what are our options here dot density dot equals or friction or radius create mesh uh Is touching? The touching wouldn't matter. Overlapping collider, maybe? I don't know. That's just, I don't know. I, I was thinking of a way that I could just make this a method that I could call rather than having to have is stay constantly checking this line of code just to optimize a little bit. But I think for now, I'll just pass on that. Um, okay. Let's just hit save. I just hit Control W on my notepad. Let me reopen that real quick. Once this decides to load, of course. Okay, thank you. Open that baby up. Okay. So now that we've done that uh, in our lever script, when we do uh, update multiple objects here, we are going to want to also do a g dot git component conveyor built script dot um what do we call it letter manipulation equals true Okay. And we shouldn't have to worry about doing that when we turn it off. Right? More like when we reset it. When we reset it doesn't matter. We do need to do it here. Because we do need to change it if we like flip it again while playing. But if we just like reset like reset up here, everything's gonna go away anyway, so it's fine. Um, however, I do think what we will do, just in case, <clears throat> I'm gonna set this to false, <coughs> excuse me, up here. When we are resetting them, we'll do that. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna get up, stretch. It's been two hours. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, all that good jazz. Ugh. Good stretch. All right, go to the bathroom, get food, get drink, whatever y'all gotta do. We'll come back. We'll then test this out, make sure it works, and if it does, we'll finish this level off. Everything will be Gucci. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. And struck by a thought that's very important that we need to address before I move forward. What's to stop the player from spawning a destroyer block and just moving it down here to destroy the depositor? Good question. Well, a block void, of course. All right. And of course, we're just going to leave it how it is. No way they get 50 destroyers down here. They can't even push destroyers into other things, right? The only way that they can possibly trigger a singularity is this formation. Because <laughs> you cannot push two destroyers together. They just get destroyed. This is the only way. So, let's try this now. Flip. We got an error. Uh, on stage 2D, we got an error here. Why? This is the, the error. Um, Let's do a debug.log. Oh, I know why. Because it tried to do... Yeah, okay. Um, let's just do this anyway. Collision.game object. We'll just do that for now. However, we also want to check if collision.game object does not equal null, then we want to do this. Okay. Now it should work. The, the problem was, um, and the reason why this happened is because the first conveyor belts that it changes are, are these ones. And because it had an error there, it, it kind of fucked things up. So let's, let's hit play one more time, we'll go back in. This should work this time. Because of course the, the first conveyor belt set of changes do not have off. Oh. I'm checking if it's not equal to null. How is how is this one triggering? The game object. Wait, is colliding with a tile map? How? God damn it. Really? The conveyor belt is colliding with the... How? How is it... Huh? That? That has to be the reason. Um, okay, let's go into our conveyor belt. It's going to be a little annoying, but let's let's change the box collider to be... Just a smidge in on both sides here. It should still function just fine with uh, everything else. But now it won't be touching the walls? I guess? Well, if I know. Let's just check and see what happens. Still a tile map, but how? How? What? 
I don't get it. Why is this happening? You aren't actually colliding with them, though. I mean, I guess I can go or collision, collision dot game object dot name equals collider tile map. I can just get rid of that. I don't know if this is going to work at all either. How? Oh, fuck. I said equals. I need does not equals. That's completely my fault. Good catch, chat. No, I caught it. Yeah, because it's it's checking if it's not null or if the uh, thing equals that. So if I do this, listen here, you little shit. How? Do, do I need in parentheses the Unity thing that whatever? Okay, let me let me just put name here instead. Hit the debug. And if I hit this lever, you piece of shit. You piece of shit. That's exactly what I have here. That's the name, you ass clown. We don't, we do not need or, we need an and there. Right. Because obviously, uh, it just checks if the game object's not null. And if it's not null, then we just, like, I don't give a fuck, so, uh. Okay, so it does debug, but it doesn't give an error now. Um, shit. Okay. <clears throat> Unity, how to get all objects in a collider 2D trigger. Find all objects in a box collider. If you want to know that, use box overlap documentation. Um, let me, let me try one thing here. Okay, so we're going to do a public void. Um, reset pressure plate. Not reset pressure plate, goddamn preset conveyor. I don't know why I thought pressure plate. Um, we're then going to take collider array of hit colliders equals and then physics dot overlap box game object dot transform dot position. And then that was really hell.
in this particular thing. Oh, but well, that might be because they're using 3D. What if I do Unity 2D? Look at all game objects is currently touching another game object without triggers. I want to call a method to see an object touching colliding with it. Uh, for all game objects, I'll trigger exit, but there's nothing. Collider 2D dot cast. Cast the collider shape into the scene, starting at the collider position you can find the collider itself. Um Yeah, they're they're talking about 3D. I don't want 3D stuff. Hmm. I suppose what I could do is when a thing hits on trigger, I could add it into an array. This would be fucking annoying. Um Okay, first of all, let's get rid of this. Debug here. Yeah, Google is very unhelpful with this particular uh, thing here. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is make a private list of game objects called the lighting objects equals newest game objects. Okay. On await, we want to do lighting objects dot clear just to make sure it's empty. Okay. And then when we enter. We want to do lighting object dot add collision dot game object go then when we go down to exit we want to do uh, colliding objects dot remove and then we need to do collision.gameObject, like that. So that should keep a list of everything that is currently in the, uh, the thingy thing, right? Right? And now when we do the reset conveyor, what we're going to do is basically anything that is in our list here for each game game object colliding objects we're gonna want to do our thing here so let's just grab this okay um let's do if object is not equal to null i'm just gonna get rid of this on stay stuff now and if object i guess i can just do dot name equals to fire map so i just want to make sure that this stuff is not true so we want to do object component object component and we want to send object into that um Is there a way to convert something to collision? What is a collision? How do I create a collision? What's the definition of collider? Yep, not gonna do that. Okay. Um ha. 
I guess I could just do instead of an object of a list of game objects, a list of collision. This. I guess it would be Collider 2D. So let's grab this real quick. Paste it there, or at least I don't know. We need to do Collider dot game object. Not equal null. Collider dot game object dot name, and then we need to do that again down here. That one and that one. Just send in the object then, and then we can just remove dot game object from the back of these. Ugh. But then we also need to do when we add, we need to check um, if colliding objects dot contains and then collision equals false. Yeah. We want to add this. Okay, so what error do I still have here? Expected that. Okay. Perfect. Alright, so exit should be pretty straightforward. We're just gonna remove objects. Um enter might take a little bit of explaining here how that works. Did the music just like get really quiet for like anyone else or like I don't know like it was loud at first then I changed it down to volume 10 and then it worked for a while then I got all of a sudden it just got quiet for me I don't know weird stuff anyway um okay so yeah back back to this so when an object first comes in it's going to check to see if it's inside the collision list already if it is I'm not going to add it okay um, if it's not in the collision list, it's going to add it, which means when we come back into the reset collider, we're going to go into our thing here. We're going to find it and do this, but we need to check if object dot game object dot um, get component destroyer block does not equal null. We need to make sure we can actually do this. Because there's usually going to be very limited times we're actually going to flip a con flip, flip a lever on a conveyor belt. This is probably going to be the only time he says, as he realizes that <laughs> previously he'd also said, yeah, this is probably going to be the only time we're going to be flipping conveyor belts. Uh, so we're not going to have to really deal with the lever uh, needing it. And yet, here we are, needing it for a lever. Okay, anyway. So we'll do this, which means if we go back to the lever script, lever manipulation is not what we want to do. We want to do reset conveyor. So if I just do search f dot lever manipulation equals false, I can then change this to be dot reset conveyor right here, and if I just hit enter, 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 bam. Works like a charm, okay. However, it didn't look at their other stuff. I guess equals true as well, right? Bang, bang, Oop, like that, like that. Right, it was equals true is what actually sets it to reset stuff. Which means actually I don't need the I don't need this line up here, right? I'm not using the variable I was previously in reset. Okay. However, the problem is when we do reset, we are going to need to clear out our Collider. Mm 
Maybe I make this public. And then in our lever reset script, um, if is conveyors, we want to do that. And then at the end, we want to do um, actually no. Down here we want to do g dot get component prevail dot. Uh, what was it? That uh, value that we added. Uh, colliding objects dot clear, right? We want to get rid of all the objects that are in the list for each conveyor belt so that when we do reset it, it's perfect. Right? Which means we can also get rid of lever manipulation. Uh, which means I'll search F. Lever manip. Nope, okay, perfect. All right, so we shouldn't have to do anything else. Fingers crossed. Let's check and see what actually happens when we try to run it again. So we just made a lot of changes, and who the hell knows what's gonna happen when we do this. So flip. Okay, it's moving. Excellent. Flip and flip. So they all work. Okay. Didn't happen fast enough, though. The original goal was to test out and see whether or not these uh, actually do anything. Was that not quick enough? Oof. What was the, uh, on this, on this block void? We have two seconds between we get there, right? Well, let's hit this real quick. Play again. Wait. I think I realized the mistake here. In the block void, I check if max time to see destroyers is greater than or equal to time when it should be less than or equal to time because of course max time between destroyers is always going to be higher than time since time resets to zero so that was why that did not work let's try this again now one more time and then we're done hopefully with this little bit Getting new mechanics working is really a time sink, but once we get them working, uh, we should really see quite a lot there. Ooh, there we go, the singularity. Oh, baby. Now we can push this guy out. Oh my gosh, so chonky. This is going to eat up the player's time when they're moving it, too, so that's even better. Push it in there, and they're done. Oh, yeah. Okay. I do think... Maybe... Do I have... If I open up my... I don't know, my Sonic Experiments thing here, and go over here to sound effects. Do I have like a an interesting sound I can add when a block void turns into a singularity? Hmm. Let's see. If I go to my normalized audio, <laughs> we have a fire explosion. What's that sound like? Thunder, maybe. I think thunder would be the only uh, sound effect that we have that I could use. However, I have been trying not to use sound effects made by other people because I've only used ones that I've made myself. So maybe. I could find something that I could uh, 
create a zappy sort of crazy sound with I'm just gonna randomize the music because I forgot where we were at before. Yeah, because I think if I if I just were to take a song, I'm gonna have to add credits to someone else. And I don't want to do that. I want to have as few people in the credits as possible, just because it's easier to make the credits, first of all. Um, and also I don't want to be like, hey, you did this one specific thing. Uh yeah. If I have one person for music, that's great. One person for sound effects would be me, which I don't have to include because I'm just gonna be the designer. And one person for you know, the, the animations, slime, it's really the only other thing I'm using here in assets. Um, I'll have to list Mega Crash for the, the forest area, but that's fine. Um, and then for the other background, it's me, so yeah. Right now there is a total of three people that I need to credit in this game. And that's uh, our, our music guy, who is, is Tim Beck, and then... We have our slime artist, who is Admiral, and we have our tile map for the forest area, who is Mega Crash. And those are the, the three that we have to uh, do. Yeah. So. Everything else has been made by me, do you believe? Cool. All right. We finally got this working, which means we can destroy the destroyer blocks we put on here as a test. Okay. So, the player is going to get a um, destroyer block bond by hitting this pressure plate. We know how that works. We're going to set this to... Mm. Ignore destroyers, so that way it can't be destroyed by a destroyer block, because that would just... Um, if you just accidentally did that. Um, speaking of which, we need to move the, uh, the spawn point for this guy over here. That way it actually spawns a destroyer block, rather than doing nothing, because it, it can't, because the player's on top of it. Okay. Alright, so now that we've done that, we have our Singularity Creator, we have our uh, Blast Chamber, or Safety Chamber, whatever you want to call it, where you, you know, seal the gate to protect yourself against what could potentially be a deadly Singularity here. And then, we have it going into a huge, huge block void or depositor that is necessary. To go in there. So, the one thing. Hmm. So, I was thinking the one thing I could do is have the singularity destroy block voids. However, if I did that, I'd have to add into our level reset script resetting of block voids. So, no thanks. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard. It would literally take five minutes. But at the same time, I think it's fine if I just push the block of the singularity over the block void because it's it's made from a singularity. So it's fine. Okay. So now we just need to figure out what we're going to do in the rest of this area. Um, I suppose we could add an attack tower here that shoots up. And that's just going to cause the player to have some issues there, right? They're not going to be able to move the... Oh, don't do it, don't do it. Um, the, 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 when they're moving the... The, the, the destroyer block. It'll be going over that way, right? And we can also add a attack tower here that goes to the right. And that goes that way, so there's you know, crossing over and whatnot. Um, time to attack. Let's set that to three. Because if we don't, then their projectiles will collide. Which they still might. Hold on.
Like every two would collide, but I'm gonna change that to two instead. Will they ever collide? Was the distance, I forgot about that. That might be the way to go. Oh, I did change it like mid-fire, so it might not be exact. Let's try it again. Do what it does. Or, yeah, I don't think we're ever gonna end up hitting unless we like run, run for like ever. But at that point, meh. Okay. Yeah, and if we uh, go down, we can move the lock around and do whatever we want with it here. Move it off the conveyor belt. One. Oh, early. Kind of fucked that up. Push it a little higher. Push them in there. Oops. Not bad. Wait for it to go and then. And then we can wait for another one and go. Sure, we leave some space down below so I can get underneath it. I'm gonna flip this one up here and we're done. In about a minute, it takes currently to get those placed and uh, set up. Okay. So I think we can just add a little extra stuff here to make it a little more inconvenient for the player to. Um, you know, do things, go like this. Uh, really, that area is not going to be used for anything much. I guess I could put a destroyer block up there. Hey, Ragged Kibbles, how you doing? It's going good. Making some good progress here on the game. That's nice. Goddamn. I uh, forgot that was the bit alert. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, thanks for the bits, by the way. Okay. So I think that's what we'll do for there. We can also add a couple more um, blocks, like, around, just to mess with the player a little. Give them trouble. Then they, they, they could just Use the destroyer blocks to destroy the, uh, the towers, too. Easy enough to do. All right. And down here, I don't really need much, do I? Yeah. Okay, let's try this level, see how fast I can beat it. So, first of all, our first problem is going to be all of the uh, little things that are blocking us from pushing these blocks into their, their proper slots. So let's avoid that shot, shall we? Oh my god. I avoided one shot just to get hit by another. Okay, you know what? Let's destroy the towers first. Get out of here. Oh my you stinky towers. pisses me off the most, I think. There we go, it's gone. All right. Now we can focus on the puzzle. Let's go ahead and wham that in there. Move this one up one. Now we can start filling these up. We also have to destroy the uh, blocks down below that are blocking us from moving to the far right one. That's fine. Oops, that's a little too high. 
punch down a little bit. There we go. On the conveyor belt, you go. Get this guy down here. I'm going to go around that block and have it right there. All right, one more of these, and then we are done with moving around the destroyer blocks. go up there you go all right now we just got to get back to the lever area boop and then boop 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 and singularity has been created all right now let's move it down into position it's so heavy It is weird that it's kind of animated while we're pushing it. Anyway, levels completed in, I think that was like 2 minutes 30, maybe 3 minutes, somewhere around there. Shrug. All right. Excellent, and that's going to be the level. So, let's go ahead and make our dialogue here. Now let's go 5. All right. Six six x experiment uh, will be slightly different from the previous. Well, I am studying what you what you will do. I also want to see what happens to certain elements when they. Collide. God, that doesn't seem like collide is spelled like that, but yeah. Okay. Specifically, what happens when multiple destroyer blocks? I forgot the R in destroyer. Enter a block void at the same time. In theory, a super dense singularity will be created. So do that for me. Will you? I even created a little safe bunker for you when you trigger the experiment. I don't know why. All right, here we go. So this experiment will be slightly different from the previous ones. Let's do that. Uh, while I am studying what you will do, I also want to see what will happen to certain elements when they collide. Specifically, what happens when multiple destroyer blocks enter a block void at the same time? In theory, a super dense singularity will be created. So, do that for me, will ya? I even created a little safe bunker for you to trigger the experiment in. You're welcome. Okay. Let's, let's, let's add one more. I think it should keep you safe. In theory. Who knows what will really happen. Okay. So we'll do that. Uh, we can then go to our level prefabs and drag our level world or two down to it. Hey, <clears throat> I just realized... We have not been setting the reset parameters for our levels, which is not great. So let's do that now before I forget. That would be really bad. First of all, let's go ahead and drag that over there. Save. 
Okay, now do the reset level area. So let's lock this. And then we have a pitfall we need to drag over to here. Um, we have a depositor that needs to be put over to there. And I think really that's all other than a movable block, which we need two of. So I need to go into prefabs and do uh, item to respawn, item spawn and then the movable blocks don't matter because they're not going to get destroyed so i really just need to add two more spawns here as well here and here and then we just need to move these onto their blocks and we will be done with reset for this level very simple one love to see it all right the next one's going to be a little bit harder but that's just because there's more moving parts. Easy enough. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So we have a depositor we need to move there. Uh, we have a number of immovable blocks. I'm just going to copy these and put them all there. We have some attack towers. We need to move here. We have levers, plenty of levers, to be honest. And then we have our gates that we have here. Uh, we do have a pressure plate right there. And we don't have any pitfalls. We don't have any portals. We don't have any cages. So, looks good. Okay, the one thing we do have to think about, though, is the block void. I guess, I guess we'll do a block void. Let's go ahead and create a list of game objects. We're just going to call it block void. Right like that. And then we'll just go down here. So if block void, wait, why do I have multiple? Oh, block voids dot length. Dot count is greater than zero. We want to reset them by basically just doing for each game object g in block voids we want to do g dot set active equals true and then i guess i'll just add a do this and then we can do time equals zero Destroyer entered equals zero. <coughs> Destroyers absorbed equals zero. <coughs> this is not going to be false, my bad. Okay. Uh, that'll reset the block voids. Okay. So in here we set it equal to true. Let me do g dot get component block void dot uh, reset void. That's what we had there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, which means we can now in the block void script uh, we can do if the object is case singularity. We can do this dot game object dot set active equals false. Ooh. Excellent. Which actually, once this triggers, I wonder if that's going to cause any issues. I should check. Yeah, I'll check that here in a moment. Okay. 
So now we have it so the block voids will respawn as necessary. Easy enough to handle. Okay. So in this, we just need to copy over our block voids as well. I'm going to do both of them. Boop, there we go. Okay. So save. All right, now let's go back. Go to our level prefab. I'm going to just copy this back into here so I can test it. And then we're going to grab a couple of destroyer blocks here. Here. And here. Because I don't want to have to replay it, for God's sake. That'd be freaking insane, wouldn't it? go all right we'll hit play i just want to see what happens i want to make sure the singularity block does um appear and it does perfect i don't get any errors either which is nice which means we don't have to worry about anything okay now i can go ahead and just uh destroy this whole thing all righty then So, in our list of levels here, we have this thing, which we can now remove to so the next level. A level where you slide blocks across ice to hit a switch and open a gate and have it get through a gate before it can have get through a gate before it closes. Right, I think I understand. Okay. But you know, actually, I was thinking we should introduce the red slime. However, I think I'll introduce him last. He will be introduced in level or world five. He'll be the world five mechanic where he'll be in every single level after that. Indeed. All right. Let's set this up real quick. Okay. All right, so this level, we want to make a sliding puzzle where you have to move a block across ice to hit a switch, open a gate that you then have to get through before it uh, closes. So what I mean by that, very simply, is we're going to have a pressure plate here. We're going to have ice here. Ice is going to go, uh, it can move to the right. And then we're just going to copy this a couple of times. Can. Like this. And then we're going to have another pressure plate here. And then this gate, for example, will be here. And the first pressure plate, it is going to trigger one object, which is going to be this gate. And the second pressure plate is going to trigger one object, which is also going to be that gate. Okay. And then I guess let's get another ice thing here and we'll also have it go to the right. And then at the end, we'll put a block void just so the block gets deleted. Uh, easy peasy. All right, so now if we were to put a block here, for example, and if we were to move our spawn point over to here, so we can spawn somewhere out in the open, what's going to happen is we're going to spawn, push this block, and it, it, it's, yeah. Trigger once means that it's just going to trigger one time, 
Right. So. Hmm. Do I need to make another boolean for the pressure plate? Ugh. I do. Okay. <clears throat> Serialized field. Don't. Oops. No exit trigger. We we'll call it that. And then in the exit script, is that we'll do if no exit trigger equals true. We're just going to return, which will mean it's not going to trigger an exit. Okay. Okay. Have to wait for it to load. We can click our new box, no trigger exit, and no trigger exit. Now it should just, once we push it across, enable the first one, do nothing when it leaves, and then we can get through there before the pressure plate hits. We got fucked up. Okay. Which reminds me, I should make all of these other ones have. Let's see, I want. Well, anyway, that's the basic premise of this level, what it's going to be. Um, so I'm just going to delete all this ice real quick, except for one, which I'm going to uncheck that at. And the pressure plate, I might as well leave these pressure plates here for right now. I'll just have them like this. Excellent. Okay, so. What we should do first is place down our level exit. I think we'll put it down here. It's been a while since we've had it in this corner, I feel. We'll do that. Then we'll move our endpoint down to there, so it's there. And then let's go ahead and just create a little thing like that. Excellent. All right. And then let's add a Gate. There we go. All right. Now that we have both gates here, let's go ahead and open up a thing here so we can add their sprites as we need to. There we go. Now they match the walls. Perfect. Okay. Back to the prefabs. I'm just going to set these aside for now. All right, so the plan is to use these gates to do various things, right? Uh, we're gonna have to push a block uh, down a, a ice path, right? In order to unlock a thing. So first of all, in the upper left where we're gonna spawn, easy enough. We're gonna take this movable block. We're gonna put it here, easy enough. Then we're going to take our first patch of ice I'm gonna put it here. We're gonna grab a our first pressure plate, put it on top. I can move it, there we go. Uh, then we're gonna grab a couple of more ice things here, 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 and here. Then we'll grab our second pressure plate, put it here, our void block, here. Okay. Um We can then grab our horizontal gate and put it here. And we can build our little area around it. So that one. Then boom, 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 boom. There. And there. Okay. And then just like this. Like that. Easy peasy. Okay. So this pressure plate 
We'll open this up now. Now that we have it bounded, we can actually test it here a little bit. So spawn in, push it up, push it over. We can leave, except of course the, the ice doesn't work yet because we don't have it uh, going the correct way. So we're gonna check is end, can move right. We grab the rest of them, we're gonna check can move right. Over the last one, which is going to be an end, and it can move left. The rest of them can also, what do you know, move left. All right. Perfect. Okay, so now... I might just remove this movable block, put a pressure plate here. Do this up here. And this pressure plate will spawn a movable block. Mm. Perfect. Okay. I just want to check something as well. Because I think if I if I go across here, it'll trigger. I can't go back, but I can go back again. Right. I just wanted to check to see what would happen. So now if I hit this block. Move it up here, move it over. It, it, it stopped for some reason. Why? Why did you stop? You piece of shit. The ice has been just a bane in my existence for so long. Um, but we check when it enters, if it is sliding, yada yada. What about the exit for the movable block? We just set his sliding close to false. Okay. If exit now equals true. True for all of them. Okay. So... I don't know. Let me just double check all of this. So we have movable block, which gets that is sliding equals true, so that it can slide. And it checks the velocity. Comes down into here. It's going to be moving to the right. And then if it says can move right equals true, it does that. And then it just does its thing here, yeah. <laughs> then we go on exit trigger. If it is the end equals true, or stop on exit in the object direction. going down here. For this, I'll just stay exit now. Doesn't really matter right now. Um okay. We're going in, which means we're getting an error here. Is that right? This can move right is true. So is it detecting the block is in the wrong position? No. What do you mean, no? So when it's coming in, it is accidental is false, it's getting the movable block, it is 
The sliding equals to true, it's getting the movement velocity, which then it goes into get block direction, which should be returning something. I guess we can just minimize this, open up this, and I can do debug.log direction here. Because why is the, why, why, did, why would it say null to me? I think I know why actually. So it says right, right, and then it gives me a null. Is, is the null coming from the second block? No, because it's happening in the trigger. So the first, the first and second right, they were coming from here when we checked the movement velocity. So it's the thing that is going right both times until we get the object direction, which is what? Where do we actually set object direction at? Where do we set object direction at? We do it in get direction. But, huh? How is it null then? How is it ever null? I guess if it, if we don't go into it direction? That can't happen. Wait. Yeah, I didn't have that in here. I just need to do this down here. Okay, that, that explains that explains it. Should have all that taken care of. But now, if I hit play, I think it should work. Question mark. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, I think I was so focused previously on um, getting the player and the destroyer blocks to work that I can just completely decide to say screw it to the block ones. So, yeah. Okay, so that's the, the first one. And give me just one second, I'll be right back.
Okay, excellent. I just had to get a package from outside. Got delivered. As I'm moving next month, I'm, I'm getting I'm packing materials for uh, all my figurines uh, so that they can move in safety and don't get broken by getting jostled around and stuff. So I think with the stuff I got now, I should be Gucci, is it? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so back to our thing. So now that we have the ice and stuff figured out, we shouldn't have to worry about this problem anymore. I hope. Okay. We're going to keep this theme for the most part going through here. Um, basically, the player is going to need to be pushing blocks around ice, essentially, and getting them to open and close doors for them. So, that's the thing. Yeah. But we also need to open this door at some point, and that's not going to be by a pressure plate. We're instead going to get a lever for that, right here. And it is going to be linked, like I said, to that door down there, which is the vertical door. This is the object to change. It's going to be one object. It's going to always start visible. Um, hold on. One second. The uh, gate down here, I think, is starting to be checked to off. I'm just totally forgetting what my scripts do. <laughs> Not my scripts, but my uh, my stuff, my, 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 my items. Okay, so now we have this uh, with its here. We're doing one object, so that's all it matters for. So we're going to set that right there for now. It's just, you know what, let's, let's actually set it in front of the door so I remember it's, it's there. Okay. So I think we want to make a couple more sliding puzzles. So let's use the bottom left space to use some conveyor belts. And then I think we can, oops. Every time, every time I hit control C and control V, it doesn't do what I want it to do. And it's so annoying. Okay. So. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this, and it's going to go to the right. This one is going to go down, so we need it to go negative 90. Yes. This one needs to go to the left, so it's going to be 180. This one is going to go up, so it's going to be 90. <clears throat> go. And between these, we're going to place ice. Go, and there we go. All right. So let's go ahead and adjust our tile map here a little bit. We're going to use a straight one here and do a corner piece here. And let's go ahead and have this go all the way down to there, like that. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and just also place. In the center here, just a couple of things like that. It was just a, a kind of an endless loop of stuff happening, right? Okay. So, 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 so. We can now add a pressure plate down here that will uh, trigger when we do stuff. Oops. Oh, not that. Uh, undo. There we go. Okay. The pressure plate gonna do something probably just one object uh we'll see what exactly it does upon a later time but for now let's grab these conveyor belts um they are going to send the block which is perfect what i want to do we need to manipulate these though um so is and can move down actually all of these blocks are going to be is end because they're the end for their specific uh, 
path. So this one, it can move up. This one can move to the left. This one can move to the right. Not that the right or left, you know, the rights and the ups and the downs and stuff aren't gonna matter too much. Uh, this one, it can go up. This one can go down. This one can go right. And this one can go left. Okay, so we're gonna at some point push a block into there, but it's gonna endlessly cycle the, the block through that particular point, okay? But I think we should get a gate and block that one off first of all. And so let's get another pressure plate perhaps here. And then it is going to spawn a block here. Let's go ahead and assign it a block to spawn, one object. Okay, excellent. And so for the pressure plate down here, I also want to check the no exit trigger, which just triggers once every loop. That's going to be kind of like a, a timer you can think of it as. So I don't know what it's going to do yet, but we'll figure it out. So this one spawns a block. You go there, you uh, push the block down, push it into there, it'll do stuff. But you also need to use it in order to open this gate. So what we're gonna do is, let's see, how best to do this one. We're gonna wanna be able to pull it down there and I guess we can put a, oops. We put a thing here. You just go down. I wouldn't be able to push it if I get it down there. So that's unfortunate. Um, and if I use a inverse block, it's going to go inverse as well. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I could flip the, the, the conveyor belts so that they work with inverse blocks. But then as you are moving the block, you're also going to be going against it. So that's the thing. I would like to do something i feel like i want to put like an inverse block here or like a converter block here in this area somewhere but if i did that i would destroy the block and then it wouldn't re-enter would it especially on ice if i put it on the ice it, it wouldn't do it but if i put it on a conveyor belt it would it would work but it would cause some issues i think um so what I can do. Sorry, that was really dumb. Um Yeah, why not? Let's put this here, put that here. We can put our next pressure plate here. This pressure plate is going to manipulate that gate. Right there, one object. It's not gonna have an exit trigger. It is instead going to go across to some ice. Well, this is going to be is end, but can move right. This ice is going to be is end, but can move left. We're then gonna get another conveyor belt. I'm gonna have this one go negative 90 again. And it is going to be going down. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say center the block. And then we're going to add more ice here, but it can slip downwards. I think I have enough room for this. We'll check. Um, so this one is going to be, it's just going to be is end. And that's all I can do. Okay. 
So, let's finish the tile map here. We're going to add a corner piece here, and we're just going to ram into the wall there. And we're going to add a corner... Oh, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go straight up from here. Add a corner piece here. Not there. Bad. Do that. And then we're going to make this one just a straight wall. And then grab that one there. This one here, that one there, and then we're just going to use the blank ones to do that. Okay, excellent. So, back to our thing here. We're going to get a block void and put it there. We're going to get another piece of ice, it looks like now. We're going to do that. Okay, so this ice, actually, it can go down. This can go up, but it is the end as well. Okay, so this way you push it in there, yada, yada, yada. Then this is going to also control that gate. So we're going to want to grab it, making sure it's the right one I'm thinking of. And da, 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 da. go. The one object, no exit trigger. Okay. Little check, there, there. All right. So basically, you will need to push a block down and into there. And then get down here and push it into there before the gate closes. So what you might do is something that looks a little bit like this. First of all, we'll spawn this block. Push it across there. Spawn this block. We need to get it into position first. But we'll go down through here, do that, and then very quickly fuck up, apparently, because for some reason the conveyor belt didn't want to go down. Did I name that conveyor belt so it actually is going down? I did. Why is it not working? Huh? Why? It should have triggered, right? There's not a big enough gap for it to not trigger, right? Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's supposed to center the block, too. What the fuck are you saying, boy? Ah, crap. Well, that happened. No. Okay, we can get out. That's a good discovery to make. All right, so if we just push this. Okay. So it it looks like, for whatever reason, the sliding onto like a diagonal. It's not. It's not being liked for some reason. It's going very slow which I guess is okay for our purposes. The player has to push another one down here. It just seems odd. But it does go around, which is good until it gets stuck for some reason. This is not at all what I wish. Time to have happen. Okay. So what if I do put ice here? Hmm? What if I do? What if I what if I put ice here, huh? And then for this one, rather than it being the end, you can move right. And this one is gonna be the end. But you can move left and down. And this one's not the end, because you can still move up. Oh. Oh. And for this one we're gonna uh do that, so that you can actually see the conveyor belt there. That's perfect. Let's test that out now. And if that works, we can mess with the bottom left to see if it works. So I forgot what I was doing for a second. We got out of this room. So push that. Spawn this. Push this. Push that. Okay. 
That's what I figured. Why isn't it centering though? Wait, what do you mean? What, what? Do I not have any logic for center block? I just... There ain't no way I created this value called center block and then I never used it. What? No, I've used it. I 100% used it in the level where we were pushing um, destroyer blocks down. And I've seen it snap before. Unless it's the ice that it was doing it with. No? Pressure plates also had a snap on that, I guess, but... Okay, whatever. If center block equals true, I guess we'll just do this. Um, we want to take um, collision that game object. Well, first of all, we don't want it to happen with the player. So if collision, if collision dot game object or I can just do ob equals player I can just do nothing although that would be stupid to have it like that uh, we just do it's not equal player so we can cut this collision and then collision dot game object dot Transform dot position equals this dot transform dot position. And that should work now. I don't know why it wasn't like that before. That was weird. But let's try it now. What the fuck? Okay, real quick. Hey, Google. Um, Unity 2D. How to have tile, tile map collider not trigger triggers, I guess. So this probably based game where the player moves and they can push around or start tile cladding. You tile maps to quickly lay out a level, then listen for on tile map for each tile to determine how to handle it. How that works. No, that's not exactly how it works, no. Um Do I need to There's no way to like mask interaction. Tile map renders interaction with the sprite mask. I don't think that's what I want. Hmm. We'll just a handle of collision. Um. That's going to be fucking insane if every time I have like a trigger or something, it's going to move like a tile map and shit, right?
like how to filter out tile map from triggers. My trigger is my everything. Well, me thinks I'm gonna literally have to do a. If it's a collider, don't do it. Oh my god! If object equals player, or collision dot game object dot name equals. Or does not equal collider tile map. Try that. I did not think the tile map was gonna collide with every single fucking thing that has a trigger on it. Holy shit! Absolutely insane. Why is this happening? Because as soon as I do that, it's gonna. Fuck off to there. <sighs> you shouldn't be transforming because it's tile map collider. Fuck off with that. Um, Yeah, I can't do that here. I'm gonna have to do it somewhere else. I'm gonna have to do it when it's uh, in an object, or else it's gonna actually search for every single fucking thing. Okay. The player we don't care about. Movable block. We want it to happen. Enemy, we don't want it to happen. Inverse block. You want it to happen. Destroyer block. I'm just gonna ignore that because it seemed to be working previously. So let's do that. Now if I hit it, it should in theory work. He says as he probably still does not have it working for some weird reason. Well, it's not giving me any error, and it's not shifting the map around like a crazy person. Now it helps if we don't over press the left there. Okay, that was my fault because I moved too far there. Okay. Now I think I can just delete this last piece of ice that I added. Now let's see if it works now. Actually, it won't work because the fucking ice here, not here, here, is the end, and then here is end. Right. Okay. Let's try this now. Back off. Why? Okay, I'm about to say, am I stuck or something here? Huh? Okay, there it goes. It worked. Excellent. So now if I actually test this, since I don't have ice underneath those other ones, I think this should work. I totally forgot what I was doing for a second, so... Oops. Ah, light. 
a little bit too fast, I think. I can get down here and there we go. All right, so now does it continue to go around? It does, okay. A little jarring to see, but better than it not going around at all. So I think I'll change this conveyor belt to be a force of one. What is just a little bit lower? And that should fix that issue. All right. So what I could do that's obvious, I could put a gate here for that pressure plate to go around and trigger, but that would just open and close it. And I mean, you have plenty of time to get from here up to here and through in order to, uh, <sighs> oh, yeah, you have plenty of time to get from here to here through there in the next area. So we really want that pressure plate to manipulate something else, I think. What? What? Hmm. What if we... Do something like this. And then this pressure plate here is going to one object and it's going to do this one. Oops, that one. This first gate, this one is going to trigger it. Kind of on a loop, you know? Actually, you know what? I might just get rid of that one. There we go. So we'll do this one. Kind of turning it on and off. That way the player has a place to stand here when they're flipping the lever. And it's not just, you know, messing around like that. All right. So I think what we'll do is we'll put another one of these. We'll just kind of copy it. And put it up there. So I'm actually just going to copy. Um, can I just do this? Perfect. Okay. And then this pressure plate is going to be controlling number four. And what we'll do here is we'll also add our lovely thing in there. And add a wall and a wall and a corner like that. All right, then we'll need to push another one in through there. And that one's going to start flickering that one on and off. And it'll be kind of like, can the player get through it in time when both of those are open? Since there's two of them triggering, it'll also be a, like, perfect timing kind of thing for when you push this one in. Because if uh, this one's open and that one's closed, you're kind of screwed if uh, they're like alternating like that. So I think that'd be really good. Then what we need to do, I think, is I could add a hallway here. And we could do a cap there, why not? make the player's length or travel of time a little longer. That's what that's for right there. Okay. Let's add another pressure plate up here. And it is going to spawn our block here. Um, I don't know why I placed a block like an idiot. Um, we need to move that there and spawn a block that one object. Um, that's fine. Okay. 
Okay. So then we're going to get more ice here. There, 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 and there. We're going to put a block void here. And then we just need to change the ice settings. So can move up, uh, up and down, up and down and all around, up and down. Now I can do it. Of course, now the, now the canvas is in the way. That's going to be the end, and it can only move down. Okay. Next, we get our pressure plates here. And it's going to be one object. It's going to have no exit trigger. And then we're going to use that for another gate, which we need to grab from here. We'll put there. Excellent. And then that's going to be that gate. So there to there. So we're going to copy this pressure plate so we don't have to do any extra work and put it there. Like that. <coughs> okay. Excellent. A little slide of block down there. We'll have to put them in there. Let's add a little extra stuff into this little hallway just to make the player have to move. Why not? So, I think here and then... This one? Yeah. Mm. That one would be bad. And then... Well, I can do this and then that. And then we can do one of these here. Yeah. There we go. Okay. That's that. All right, so. What that'll do is the block will spawn here. Uh, the player can then go around here, push it over to there, push it down there, go over to there. Right, let's, let's just fucking play test the damn thing, why don't we? Okay, you spawn a block, push it up, push it over, there you go, and make it through, spawn a block. First you want to go over here with it, push it down, and over, and over, there we go. I just realized you could get trapped in there if you're uh, not careful, but you know what? I think that's fine. Okay. Next, we're going to spawn a block. We're going to push it up. Push it over here. Spawn another block. Push it down. Push this one over and in. It's going to go around. And we're going to walk through here. Let me in! We then flip that. Stand over here. Oh, there's just enough room to get trapped between those two gates, okay. So you can be this in about a minute. Okay. Not ideal. Let's add some extra hazards. Okay. Um, let's just delay them by adding a depositor here that you're going to have to fill up with three blocks. Why not? Okay. We'd also add a, another depositor right here, but having a sign like that, I don't think it is a, a way to go. So what we can do is we can put one up here. Uh, that takes, let's do one block, mess with the player, you know. And then why don't we make another one? down here that also takes one block. I can do something down here, but I would have to have the blocks already in this position, uh, or else I wouldn't be able to do anything with them. <laughs> Unless. Unless.
Oh my god. I could make this so much more complicated. Could I? Could I? Could I? I don't have much room. But I could make it a little more complicated. Hmm. Hmm. Well, would that help? Maybe. Okay. I think I got it. We're going to grab another depositor. We're going to place that there. He's going to need one. Okay. Follow me on this. All right. We're then going to edit our tile map a little bit here. Remove that one. Remove that one. Replace that. Replace that. Then, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to grab our first pressure plate, our third pressure plate that we had. I'm going to reset the spawn here so it's not messing up. I'm going to move this one over to here. Not that. We move the pressure plate to here, and I'm then going to take this, and I move it up here, just so it's in the right area, right? And then I grab a portal. We're gonna have our portals. Uh, portal A is going to be here. Portal B, or Portal A's output is going to be up here, I think. Portal B is going to be down here. Then Portal B's output is just gonna be right there. Easy peasy, right? Then, we're going to make another portal. It's going to be pretty similar, except for A is going to be right there. A's location is going to be right there. B is going to switch over to here. And B's location is going to be over here. Let's just double check that that is all perfect. A, A, B, B. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So, what I can do with this, since those portals sort of function as walls, right, um, I can have it so that we can have a block here. And if we look, I could make a converter block here, a converter block here, a converter block here, a converter block here, here, a converter block here, and then and then. So you push that, it becomes an inverse. So you have to go around and pull it to here, it becomes a pushable block. You go around, you push it, it become an inverse block, so you can pull it down to get it to become a normal block, so you can push it down. So then it becomes an inverse block, so you can pull it to, I'm going to say here, but maybe there is right. Uh, yeah, there might be right. So I have to just switch the portals and where they spawn them, so... Let's move this one down. This one will move up. Because that way you spawn to the left of this one. So you can come here. 
get the block to here, and you'll be able to go through this portal in order to... I guess they were fine the way they were, weren't they? Yeah. This will be fine. That way that converts it to a pushable block that you can push into there and you can go through here. So let's test this out and see how much time it adds. Okay, so we could just go through here now, except this block is here. We, we can't really do anything with it because if we're pushing against the wall, we're kind of screwed. So, in fact, I'll even put a converter block here. So if we do push it, it turns into an inverse block. And then it can kind of screw up the whole puzzle, I think. Let's not do that. Let's just make them get screwed. Okay. So, first, we we'll want to trigger that. Push it. Not do that, though. Trigger that. Push it in there very slowly and easily. Um, then we want to trigger this. We're going to have to fill these holes, of course. And if we don't, we'll basically just be screwed. Hello, X3B00D502. Welcome. Just attaching this level before we finalize it, so that gets rid of that one. And push this boy down here. And then down to here. And then we'll just go boop and boop. You slide through there, perfect. And go back up to here. We need to seal this hole off, first of all. Back up to here. This one goes over to here for safekeeping. Then we can push this one down to here. Slide that one over to there. It starts going around. Perfect. Now, slide that one over to there. Go through the portal. Go back through here. Oops. Back through here. We can go around. Pull our block until it becomes a... Oh. I just got teleported. That's that's odd. Nothing should have uh, teleported the player. Hold on. First of all, where is the player? Player! He got stuck in a wall. There we go. For now, I only use Unity 2D. I am learning Unity 3D for a future project, but, but yeah. Go through here, through here, push that over there, go back through, and then we can pull this block down. Oh, that might have screwed us a little bit, but we'll see. Go back up, push it, and once again, get stuck. Hmm. How would I stop that from happening? Because it's getting clipped into the wall is what's happening when the block is getting reset like that, which is unfortunate. Hmm. I don't have an itch.io page, nope. All my games are just on Steam.
could I get the player? Open up my player move script. How do I check if something is inside a collider? Yeah, Emily. VTuber model also kind of gives it away. Hmm. So. Goddamn. Pile map collider. I'm watching most of the isekai this season. So, those are the ones that I've been watching as of late. Just check if it's colliding with the tile map because if I check that, then anytime a player touches the tile map, is going to be hide it. Because I can check how to check if a Objects collider is fully inside another collider, maybe? Hmm. I was I could just get rid of these damn things. But that's no fun. Hmm. Ray casting. Oh. This is such a niche issue, it looks like. What about this? That's Unity 3D, but it might might work. This one says player stuck in walls. Is there a way? There's a gap. I'm using is composite.
Basically, I just want to check if I'm inside of a wall so I can teleport them back to the spawn. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's do this. Um, in update, let's do debug.log. Or could I do a stay maybe? On collision stay to d debug.log in wall question mark I have to do debug.log collision so I can do debug.log collision collision dot game object That's the wrong collision that it gave me. There we go. Okay. Okay. Let's test this. Now we'll just try to purposely get stuck in a freaking wall for whatever reason. I'm just going to cheat my player through a area here. Push me to bloop, 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 bloop. There we go. All right. Now I can move this around and see what happens. Going through here, come out through this one, pull it back through here, back through the hole, push it there, back through. So I can push it again and get clipped in there. Okay, am I getting any information? Um, okay, so we're stuck in a wall. It is a tile map that. If I hit clear, does it continue going or no? Where's my player at currently? It's supposed to be happening when I am where, where it's stay, isn't it? Why is it not happening anymore? Because we're still colliding with the box, right? Hmm. What if instead of collision, I do a on trigger state to be? Here is I'm just moving it down from on trigger to on collision, but the player doesn't have a trigger, so fortunate I can add one and we'll just see what happens. So if we grab this, go here, open up our player, what we'll do is we'll create a very small circle collider and it's going to be way up inside of our player here. So let's add this. We're going to go whoop and whoop and make it even smaller. There we go. So basically, this will check if the player is stuck in the wall by checking the is trigger here. Because otherwise, this box should not be getting stuck in like a solid object. Um, if we hit play now, and we just look at our thing here, if we just move around and do stuff, it is going to check our different things here. But we can ignore that for right now. We grab our player and we just move them around here. We're gonna get a couple of things coming up, that's fine. What we'll do first is we'll just go through all of these. Easy enough. Okay, we'll go back down here here, that one actually, this one, we need to move this one down, and we can move it back down to 
there. Let's move this real quick. Hmm. Okay, it's not triggering this time. Gotta trigger this glitch. It's a very, like, sometimes happen situation. I guess I can just put my guy in the wall. Yeah. Why isn't it? So is register tile. Yeah, collider tile map. So it is showing it, but let me hit play. I'm just gonna test something else here. Let's check if. Real quick, we'll go over here and we'll do if. Collision dot the game object dot name equals to collider tile map. We're going to erase this and cut that, and we'll just put it there. We'll say in wall there. You know, the only time this should trigger is when the player is stuck in a wall. Okay. Let's test this out. Let's see if I can just like run up against the wall and mess with stuff. So if I just go over here, we're not getting any errors or debug stuff, which is great. Okay. Let's move our player. And we'll just move him right around over here. And I can move this block around. And, uh, we'll sort of test out what's happening. Okay. Down and back up. Actually, I'm going to go through the other portal. I'm in the wall and it didn't trigger. Why? Why is it not triggering? What if I try Enter 2D? Surely that wouldn't trigger either unless I go into a wall, right? My neighbors is hammering on stuff. It's very loud. Okay. We'll push that there. We'll go through. Oops. Here. Here. Okay. And once again, I didn't get any triggers. What the hell? It was showing me the thing before, right? Okay, oh, goddammit, because I searched tile. I'm an idiot! Okay. Okay. Let's make a new tag. Actually, hold on. Go back there? Was there already something called spawn? Something called respawn. Is that something I added, or...? No. It's not, okay. I'll just use the uh, the respawn tag here. And then in here, if that is, we're going to do uh, this dot game object dot position dot transform dot position is going to equal uh, game object dot find game object with tag respawn 
transform.position. And that should teleport us back to our location if we get stuck in a wall. Let's test it out. So now if I grab our player, it might actually just trigger when I move him, uh, like this. Yep. Definitely did. So what if I just move him across our little area here? To avoid him getting that. Right, then we can do this again. Okay. Oops, not there. This one. Push it across there. Go down. Up. Push it. I guess that's a pull. Never mind. Oh, I buggered this up, didn't I? I keep fucking it up by pushing too much. Let's, let's just... Yep, okay. It, it somehow teleported me back because I was in a wall, so that's great. Which means we won't get stuck in the walls anymore, I think. Let's just keep trying, though. Wall though, damn it. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. Maybe I should, rather than messing with this, let's go back to our lovely block that's actually causing this issue and rewrite some of its code, I guess. The converter block. So what we were doing previously is we were snapping it to the current location um, that we had, right? Instead of just giving it at the same location. But what we could do instead is take a private Vector 3, or I guess rather than doing it there, we can get rid of that. I don't want it to be something that's stored. Um, we'll do Vector 3 POS equals um, collision.transform.position. Let's move that down one, actually. There we go. All right, so I was going to store that. And then I'm going to destroy the object. So I can also just copy this one down to here. Once it does that, we can, instead of this transformed opposition, we can do POS, I do believe. Do we need the Quaterian identity then? We do. Okay, let's just leave it like that. Remove this POS and then that let's test out the conversion block now because now they they should as soon as you put something on them change the block okay so remove why is that conversion over there they are really hammering away so there we go. We saw it uh, changed. Oh no, is this the same glitch I was having earlier where there's a conversion block there, but it's not actually a conversion block, it's just a sprite? I think that's the issue. I think I'll make this even smaller. Let's do 0 0.1 for the, for the block. That way it's a little easier to do. You know what? 0 0.05. Screw it. Okay, now the hitbox for it is really small. We'll have to be emotionally on top of the conversion block in order to trigger. 
Perfect. Okay. What the fuck are they hammering? Okay. Let's just try this again. Okay, perfect. And then I, I fucked it up, apparently. And there's no way to get back into that room either, unless I fall down a pit. That is the problem, is that it's, it's gonna keep doing this to me whenever I touch it like that now. Why does this block have to be such a pain in the ass, huh? Ah! I could just leave the glitch in the game. how it was anyway okay so that'll work and then i suppose we can just add a new button to our menu um to our pause menu here we'll just add it on the stuck button that'll just teleport you back to the uh beginning of the menu area so Add unstuck button to pause the menu that moves you back to spawn point. Okay. I should probably add that anyway because you can get stuck between a wall and an inverse block potentially. So let's do that. Okay. So anyway, this level should be good other than that. We'll do that another time. Just added that to my little list of things to do here. Okay, so back to our tile map here. All right, so I think that'll work. Um, we push the block, it turns purple. We go through the portal, we pull the block, it turns yellow. We then push the block, and then it's going to turn uh, purple. We then uh, pull it down so it turns yellow, then we push it down so it turns purple, so then we pull it over here till it turns yellow, so we can go through there, push it through there, and get that. Right. Okay. And the player can unstuck as needed in order to do that thing. All right, and then that'll fix it and go through there. So let's go ahead and add up all of our different things. Okay, so first, we're just going to want to add our item spawn and then create a block spawn. I'm going to go there. And this block spawn, we just need to move over that one little thing there. Okay. Um, our portals, we don't have to add them because we're not going to be doing anything with them, right? Uh, they're not going to be able to get destroyed, so that's fine. Uh, we do have a bunch of depositors, however. Well, there's only four I have, right? We can move the depositors over to here. The block voids, similarly, don't need to worry about because they're not going to get destroyed. We do have a bunch of pressure plates, though. Make sure I fill that pressure plates. So pressure plates, grab all of them. Toss them over into our pressure plate area. We also have a lever, which needs to be moved there. And we also have... A lot of gates that we need to also change. Okay, and then I think everything else is fine. We don't have to add anything else to our little thing. That's all. Excellent. All right. All right, so for our discussion here, we can say, well, Singularity sure was interesting. I'll have to write up a paper on it later. For now, this is your 
Next. Test. Get to the to the end as always. All right. Nothing too fancy for this one. I'm just gonna do that. Let's hit save, and then we can go ahead and level prefab this bad boy here. Open up level two, the end level script. Oop, I gotta do that first. Toss that into there. Hit save, and we can go back out. I'm going to delete this and add the stupid same out. I don't know why that's happening. That is so strange that it is getting that uh, little error there. But anyway. Okay. Okay. So looking at our, our lovely thing of stuff to do. One second. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Muted. Um, all right. We managed to do only a couple. Sorry, my mute thing was coming up. Anyway, we managed to do a couple of things. We added our, our new block, which was the conversion block. We made our first level of that. We then made our second level, which was here. Our first conversion level, our, our second level here. And then we have our third level, which was here that we made for our world three. Perfect. And so um, we managed to complete those. It did take a little extra time because we ran into some issues with our ice block and then with this conversion block thing. And that was just a whole mess, but this thing will not fix the issue, but it will be a band-aid for the, the issue uh, in the end. Um, right. So next time when we come back tomorrow, uh, same time, same place, we will be going ahead and continuing adding a couple more levels. Uh, and going from there. Hopefully more than just three like we did today, because we won't be adding any more new blocks. So hopefully we can get around five levels added which would be really great for us. So that will be the plan, everyone. Thank you all for hanging out and being here. If you missed anything, the is going to be up on the YouTube, which you can check it out over there. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all. Bye for now, everyone.